they're overrated, they're underrated. It's one of the terms that's used uh, most heavily in sports and in college football in particular. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day. So please, if you like the videos, even if you don't agree with me, like the videos, that means smash the like button, share the videos out on social media. So consider this. If you enjoy the content, then other people will as well. So please share the videos on social media. Thank you, Lewis Papp, for doing just that. All right. Also consider subscribing. Hit that bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live. All right. Let's address overrated and underrated. Um, so is there really a metric on this? Because I'm asked this all the time. Mark, who do you think is overrated? Who do you think is underrated? Well, my next question to that person in response is, who's doing the rating? Where are we getting this rating from? All right. Well, each season... Prior to the college football season, of course, there are top 25s thrown all over the place, including for myself. The most notable of these is the AP poll, the AP top 25, and the coaches poll, the top 25 from the coaches. And then, of course, now that we've got the college football playoff since 2014, that's the only one that matters once um, the selection committee starts their ranking sometime in October. But in regards to anticipation for the season, if you look at the AP poll, that's pretty much in line with what most websites and publications you will see have to say in projecting these teams. If you go through a number of sites online and go through all your major magazines, you're going to see pretty much the same teams. If Wisconsin's 12 in one ranking, they're going to be 13 in another, 10 in another, maybe 14 in another. They're not going to be five in one person's ranking and 27 in somebody, you know, that typically doesn't happen. So we've looked at the AP poll and let's see what the metrics say about who's been underrated, who's been overrated. Let's start with the Big Ten. Owned by the Ohio State Buckeyes since uh, 2005, for the most part. Uh, Ohio State has been by far the dominant program in the conference for decades, and especially since 2005. So let's look at Ohio State, where they were ranked before the season started and after the season to see if there's any kind of trends for teams in the Big Ten. And I know that there's one team out there that most people would say uh, that team has been overrated well let's check it out let's see what the metrics say for ohio state uh, john cooper was the coach back in 2000 we're going back 21 seasons going back to the turn of the century for these rankings for ohio state under john cooper coming out of 1999 and a six and six season in which they missed a bowl game they were rated 16th in the country they finished unranked at eight and four they lost a bowl game john cooper got fired Okay, the next season, Jim Trestle takes over. They start at number 23 in the preseason poll. Okay, they finished unranked at 7-5. Uh, and five. All right, then starts 2002. They won a national championship. Number one in the country, of course, undefeated, won the national championship. They started preseason number 13. Okay, I'm not going to go through all these, but generally, that's how it started this century for the Buckeyes. They have been ranked every season in the preseason poll. They finished unranked three times. That was those first two years in 2000 and 2001. And then also in 2011, the season between Jim Tressel and Urban Meyer with Luke Fickle in command at six and seven, they lost the Gator Bowl, finished unranked. They started the season 18th. That was after Tressel got fired and there was a lot of controversy. All right, then under Urban Meyer, that first season coming off the probation season, or that was actually the probation season, in 2012, Urban Meyer took over a team that was preseason number 18 in the country. They finished number three. Under Urban Meyer, the preseason rankings looked like this. 18, 2, 5, 1, 6, 2, 5, and there you go. And Urban Meyer finished at number three, 12, number one national champ, 4, 6, 5, and 3. Now, Ryan Day preseason number five and number two in the country and they have finished number three and number two ohio state's generally been projected to be a top five team every year pretty much and they have finished in the top five every year under urban meyer and under ryan day and under jim trestle pretty much the same typically a top five team in the country and projected to be that good so they've generally 
I'm not going to nitpick between being ranked fifth when you were preseason number three. They, they pretty much been on target. All right. What about Penn State? Interesting uh, 20 year run for Penn State because at the turn of the century, Joe Paterno had it going pretty well at Penn State, but then they hit uh, some rocky years there early on. So they were ranked uh, 22 in 2000, finished unranked. Um, then they were actually unranked preseason three out of the next four years except for 2002, in which they started the season at number 24. They finished unranked Penn State five out of six years to begin the 2000s. Five out of six years. In 2002, they finished at number 16 after they lost to Auburn in the Outback Bowl. All right. Then they got things cranked up in 2005. Uh, They finished in the top five in the country after being unranked to start the season, won the Big Ten Championship, basically came within a second of playing for the national championship. Uh, Then after that, the next five years, they were preseason ranked 19, 17, 22, 10, and 19, and they finished ranked three of those times and twice in the top 10 in 2008 and 9, in which they went to the Rose Bowl, won the Big Ten Championship in 2008, finished number eight, and the next season at number nine after beating LSU in the Capital One Bowl. Then Penn State... At the end of Paterno's run, the beginning of James Franklin, and, of course, Bill O'Brien bridging those two with two seasons uh, trying to get through that Jerry Sandusky despicable act and probation that ensued. Penn State finished unranked six consecutive seasons from 2010 all the way through 2015. Penn State unranked six consecutive years, and they were preseason unranked for five of those years and then the following year James Franklin's third season at Penn State unranked in the preseason but that was the breakthrough season beat Ohio State won all those games consecutively won the Big Ten Championship beat Wisconsin in the title game went to the Rose Bowl played a good game against USC 52-49 finished number seven in the country that started a nice run for Penn State in which they finished top 10 in the nation three out of four years, seven, eight, 17, and nine under James Franklin, then entered this season, 2020, as the seventh ranked team in the country. Of course, they lost their first five games and never were ranked in uh, finishing unranked. So that's the story for Penn State. How about Wisconsin? Wisconsin generally ranked in the top 25 each and every year. For the most part, there's only been three seasons, four seasons, let's say, that they've not been ranked. Those would be 2005 and six. You've also got 2009, and you've got 2016. And Wisconsin usually plays well when they're under-regarded, according to the polls that we've seen over the last 21 years since 2000. Those seasons in which they started unranked, they finished 15, 7, 16, and 9. They finished in the top 10 twice and in the top 16 all four times that they were unranked preseason, but Wisconsin otherwise ranked preseason 17 out of 21 years. They have finished in the top 25 all but six times, 15 times out of 21 years, and they've generally been regarded in line with whom they are overall, but there's been some misses, of course. Uh, That very first year in 2000, uh, Wisconsin was number four preseason. They only finished number 23. A little bit later again, they finished 15th and 7th, in which they were unranked preseason. Uh, One year at number seven preseason in 2007, they only finished 24th. Uh, But generally, it's been back and forth with Wisconsin. When they're lightly regarded, they tend to come through. And then we've got a ton of seasons in which they were highly regarded and weren't quite as good. Now onto the Michigan Wolverines. This is the team that I would think most people would say they're overrated. They are usually overrated. Well, Michigan has been ranked preseason every year, excluding a run from 2008 through 11, four consecutive years there. And then in 2014 and 15, when Jim Harbaugh took over in 15. So there are six years in which Michigan was not a preseason ranked team. During the latter years of Lloyd Carr, 
They finished 11, 20, 9, 6, and 14. Then they finished unranked in 2005 after starting the year at number four preseason. So a big letdown that year in 05. And of course, in 14 or 2004, that was their final Big Ten championship year, 2004. They only went 8 and 4 because they lost some out of conference games. They lost to Ohio State. They lost, lost to Texas in the Rose Bowl and finished number 14 in the nation. Then all those unranked seasons there. Then you see them finishing at number 12. That's the Brady Hoke season, in which they went 11 and 2 on the Sugar Bowl after being not ranked to start the season. Number 12 there in 2011. Number 24 the next year, Denard Robinson at quarterback, and uh, they went 8 and 5 couple unranked seasons there and then Harbaugh takes over an unranked team preseason he goes 10 and 3 finishes number 12 then number 10 going to the Orange Bowl in 2016 been pretty much downhill since in terms of expectations the next year started number 11 unranked to finish the next season there in 2018 number 14 preseason number 14 postseason well they lost their last two games and that was a disappointment although they met expectations in terms of ranking and then the last two years they entered the season at number seven and 16 and they finished number 18 and unranked so michigan pretty much finishing about where again if you shake it all out maybe slightly less than expectations for the wolverines look at minnesota they're almost never ranked Preseason top 25 at number 25 in 2004. And then they weren't ranked in the preseason all the way until P.J. Fleck and this 2020 team was ranked number 19 preseason. They finished unranked. So the AP pollsters completely missed it with Minnesota. They were preseason ranked twice, and they didn't finish ranked. And then there were two other times in which they were unranked preseason, and they finished ranked. Iowa started this century under Kirk Ferentz with four consecutive seasons, unranked preseason. But in 2002 and three, they finished really strong at number eight. Actually, they finished number eight in the country. Three consecutive years did Iowa in 0, 2, 3, and four, eighth in the country. All right, they were preseason number 19 and 11 there in 0, 04 and 0, 05. They went on three consecutive seasons, finishing unranked, as you see there. Then they went number 20 and number 7, that 9 team that won the Orange Bowl. Then Iowa took a dive here with five consecutive seasons, finishing unranked. They were preseason number 9 in one of those seasons in 2010. Then they jumped all the way up to number 9 after going to the Rose Bowl and losing the Big Ten Championship in 2015. They were preseason unranked finished in the top 10 at 12 and 2. A couple back-to-back unranked seasons and then they finished the last three years ranked in the top 25 at 25, 15 and 16. So for Iowa they've been ranked in the preseason top 25 seven times and they have finished ranked nine times. Indiana never ranked not in the preseason since 2000 and way before then as well because they haven't been to a bowl game before that since 1993. No rankings for the Hoosiers. Preseason, postseason, nothing until here in 2020 when they finished number 12 in the country after being preseason unranked. All right, Northwestern. You got to think that they're going to be lightly regarded and would exceed expectations. Well, in 2000. One, coming off a season which they tied for the Big Ten Championship, they were number 16 preseason, and they finished unranked. Then, a string of unranked seasons, both preseason and postseason. You got to go all the way up to number uh, 2013. That was the season um, in which they beat Mississippi State in a bowl game, Gator Bowl, and got their first bowl win in program history finished number 17 in the nation next year coming off that year preseason number 22 but they didn't finish ranked then the next year unranked preseason but finished number 23 and there you see for the last six seasons Pat Fitzgerald and company have started the season unranked the last six seasons and guess what four of those seasons they finished in the top 25. 
at number 23, 17, 21, and number 10 this past season after beating Auburn in a bowl game and getting to the Big Ten Championship game for a second time in three years. So Northwestern, that's your underregarded team, and that's no big surprise. How about Michigan State? Well, Michigan State was at number 25 in 2000 to start the season, then they went unranked. And then pretty much unranked, except for one preseason ranking of number 13, number 18, my pardon, in their uh, 2002, all the way through 2011, Michigan State was preseason unranked. But then Mark D'Antonio took over, of course, in 2007. And by 2009, if my columns line up properly, I got a, like a scratch pad here. They finished at number 24 in the nation, unranked. And then 14 and 11 back-to-back years under D'Antonio. One of those years they got uh, smoked by Alabama in the Capital One Bowl after being highly ranked at 11 and 1. They finished unranked in 2012 at 7 and 6, but then they went on a nice run under Mark D'Antonio, winning a Cotton Bowl, a Rose Bowl. So the good run for Michigan State between 2010 and 2017. At 14, 11, unranked, 3, 6, 6, 15. Oh, times have changed. Look at Nebraska. Preseason number one in 2000. Preseason number one. And they finished number eight in the nation. Then the next season, they went to the national championship game and got smoked, uh, which dropped them all the way to number eight after they lost the Rose Bowl in the BCS championship game. But back-to-back seasons finishing number eight in the country. Uh, preseason one and four. Then it started to get spotty for the Huskers. Preseason unranked three consecutive years. They did finish number 19 and number 24 those two years. Preseason number 20 and then unranked for two more years. Unranked for three consecutive years postseason. And then you see a string of ranked seasons under Bo Pelini at the end of their big eight run or their big 12 run going into the Big Ten. Number 14, 20, 24, 25. And that's been it. Bo Pelini finished off Nebraska's run of being ranked postseason. 14, 20, 24, 25. And now for the last seven seasons, Nebraska has not been ranked. That takes us through Mike Riley and now Scott Frost. Even though in three of those seasons, they were preseason ranked at 18, 22, and 24. So Nebraska, generally overrated. Purdue. Drew Brees and Purdue in 2000. They went to the Rose Bowl that year. They started preseason number 14, finished at number 13, lost the Rose Bowl. Two consecutive unranked seasons, and then they were preseason in the top 25 three consecutive years at 19, 24, and 15, but only finished ranked one of those years In 2003, at number 18, they lost a classic game to Georgia uh, in the Outback Bowl that year. And then Purdue hasn't seen a ranking since. Illinois, bam, same thing. Number 21 to start out 2000. Didn't finish ranked. Then the next year, they were unranked to start the season. Had a tremendous year. Went to the Sugar Bowl before they got blasted by LSU and Nick Saban. But still finished number 12 in the nation at 10-2. Then all these unranked seasons, all these unranked seasons, except for one little aberration, 2007, they finished second in the Big Ten. Ohio State went to the BCS Championship game. Therefore, Illinois went to the Rose Bowl, got blasted by USC, finished number 20 in the country at 9-4. and four. That earned them, to a certain extent, a preseason ranking for 2008 at number 20. That's it for Illinois. Maryland three preseason rankings if we go all the way back to 2002 three and four at number 21 15 and 22 and three consecutive ranked teams at the end of the year in 2001 two and three at 11 13 and 17 and one lone number 23 ranking later in the decade as you can see right there Rutgers football, Greg Schiano lifted them to the heights of number 16 in the nation preseason. That was coming off that big 2006 season in which they were undefeated. I think they got all the way in the top five in the nation. 
dropped off after, after a couple losses, finished number 12 in the country. So Rutgers, the one big shining moment at number 12 in the nation in 2006. And they got some love in the preseason the next year and finished unranked and into oblivion ever since. Those are the rankings for the Big Ten preseason versus postseason. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, of course, like, comment, share the videos on social media. Subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We talk it up with you every day. So hit that bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live. And um, we may do some more of these. We could look at the SEC and other conferences, of course. So uh, leave it down in the comment section below if you got anything out of this. Right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. <laughs>